Back from the Dead, Nevit and Matt playing Twilight Princess HD. Who is that? Spooky. Oh, God, no. Uh, this. Everyone who missed Nevit, you know, uh, yeah, he's still a thing. And, oh, yeah, I mean, oh I've played. God, look at this. I've played more video <laughs> games, uh, just, you know, not with Matt and not Twilight Princess. Oh, uh, yeah, we are talking about You know, over it's been like three scene. years. Doesn't matter. Anyone who's watching this you know, yeah, and watching it for the this game. Is about, you know, it's, it's one thing that's funny is that I'm pretty sure this is about the halfway point of the game, and that's where we just sort of stopped. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, definitely. Well, we'll uh, post a few parts, and okay, we'll we'll get another third through the game, and then <laughs> let's. <laughs> and then I'll never post again. Uh, yeah. Okay, we should probably actually say something about the game. We're not the game grumps. Oh, I guess we're not. No disrespect the, to them, the but it's, it's just kind of annoying sometimes. Well, you know, it's, I get what their thing is, but sometimes. I actually want my commentator to talk about the game that they're playing. That's, by the way, people, uh, Brain Scratch commentaries. They are great. Go watch them. And also, if you I've know some kind of Johnny, he also has another... They never actually this with them up. And uh, if you if you also know some <laughs> call me Johnny, and he has another Let's Play group uh, called uh, the Super Gaming Brothers. Yeah, Johnny will never see this, but if he does, I love I love you and all you do. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, I don't even you don't. I wasn't even looking for money with the plug. I just want more people to watch uh, your stuff. Well, I hope not. No one's given any money for this shit. <laughs> yeah, but well, uh, as as you pointedly yeah. <clears throat> pointed out, let's talk a little bit about the game. Uh, where we last left off, we beat the third temple and got the last piece of the fuse shadow. Uh, but now Zant's shown up, and he... Oh, him. God, this is still fucking creepy. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Also, okay, are those teeth, or is that, is that like, spit, I, like, like, drool in his mouth? I always saw it as, like, drool. Like, he's... He's got, like, really stringy saliva, yeah. something really gross, you know? Ew. Yeah, he's him. He's a disgusting, uh... I mean, he's a bastard. Yeah, I forget what... I forget, never take us back. What was your joke when you abridged this here? Uh... You're not Zant. Something like that. Uh... <laughs> and I forget why... I know there was a whole fart attack very humorous <laughs> uh but yeah you're so critical of like your first abridged series but i think know, i'm critical like of it. everything but it's not in all seriousness i don't think there's any real critique i can give about the game about you know the videos i made almost yeah. 12 years ago now oh, yeah. and, bas and basically uh we're at one of my favorite parts of the game yeah, I really do enjoy this part of the game, you know. Well, yeah, like uh, it's uh, it's got everything. It's got the atmosphere, ambience, uh, and of course that phenomenal uh, score here. I believe it's called Midna's Desperate Hour or Midna's Lament. I've seen both. Yeah, I'm not sure. I always thought it was Lament, but it may be Desperate Hour. It might be one of those things where. Well, see, I've I've seen. Th throughout YouTube, you know, over the years I've watched it, and some people have named it one or the other. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've, uh, since I've looked at the title myself. Yeah. And to answer everyone's question, yes, when I got to this part, when I played years ago, I made sure to go everywhere in Castletown that I was permitted to go just to see the NPCs freak out. <laughs> And I totally went the wrong direction. And it's, it... <laughs> well, I think the reason I went the wrong direction Wasn't is because... 
<laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> and I say like, uh, what, um, what's it like going back to something like this after playing Breath of the Wild? Huh. I mean, like, that's a truly open world, and we, when I first played this, I thought this was a huge world. I mean, I feel like there, it, the scale of this game definitely is larger than any other Zelda game before it. Uh, you know, and you have to exclude Wind Waker because that's mostly empty sea. Um, but what... Uh, I guess it is kind of weird going back to this game, but Breath of the Wild isn't the last Zelda game I played. I played, uh, I was actually playing Majora's Mask 3D earlier today. Uh, that, that's right, you, you did say that. And that's, I mean, that's completely different. Um, much smaller, yeah, much more I'm linear. I'm gonna say this right now, in, in terms of pure gameplay, you can make it, or just in terms of scale and atmosphere, you can make an argument that, uh, you know, Breath of the Wild is probably the best Zelda game. I don't know, my personal favorite is still this. It's definitely hard, and it's definitely opinion. It It's definitely an opinion, but, um... Yeah, I don't know what it is about this incarnation of the Zelda franchise that stuck with me all these years, but there, to this day, some sometimes, like, if I think of, if you say Link, I'll probably think of Twilight Princess Link first, or something like that. Um, yeah, and like I said, I, I always think about, you know, this game when I think about Zelda. Yeah. I've definitely, this is definitely in my, in my top five, and I don't even know what that means, uh, to be honest, when you, when I'm trying to compare games from my favorite series. Uh, yeah, okay, so let me ask this. If, uh, right now, top of your head, if I said, name your favorite, what would it be? It always comes back to Wind Waker. Although, I haven't gone back to Wind Waker in a long time. I feel like a lot of that has to do with the fact that it was the game I played the most. I played it over and over and over again in the summers of 2003, 4, and 5. Yeah, okay, I can just bump that up to 2006, and I, I think that was kind of uh, my experience with this game. Exactly, and it has, you know... Some of it has to do with how old you were when you played the games that, you know, you really, you really liked a lot. And, you know, others, there's other factors too, but carefully move the pot. Don't want to scare anyone. I never did this before, know. listening to the uh, conversation. What, what, did you not know you could, or? Well, it's not that I didn't know I could, well... Maybe it wasn't this part that I didn't do, but the other thing that I, I yeah, hadn't just... done, I never go... When I first started playing, when I first played it... Oh, shoot. Um, I never actually... Uh, I never actually went back until, like they say, go back to Telma's Bar. So, once you go into the light world... I guess I could have gone back here. And uh, yeah, as I go, and finally we get our tutorial to for Pose. I love how she uh, still gives you like hints when she's dying. I know. The thing that I never get understood about this room is why are there coins? Oh, he wanted wealth and whatnot. Yeah, but... Oh, wait, are you talking... Oh, okay, you're asking why aren't they rupees? Yeah. Like, I guess I can understand that... Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can understand that, you know, money can be more than just, you know, the standard currency. 
like rupees are drop down rupees are basically well it's like they must have an intrinsic value but really you can find them anywhere in breath of the wild it seems like they are rare like compared to other games uh, you know you don't get the first time I got a rupee was until wasn't until after like the Great Plateau, in some instances. But you know it all depends. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say you definitely money is a bit more is definitely more scarce there than it's been in most Zelda games. I mean that said, people like if you just play the game, don't worry, you're gonna get money. You'll be able to afford stuff you need, and even then, a lot of stuff. You know. um... You can you just find in the world anyway. Yeah. I mean, you're right. Money's only useful for when you need to buy something, and most of the items you don't need to buy. You can uh you get them from doing battle. Uh or, you know, farming. Well not farming, but uh gathering different items. It seems like, if I remember right, like, the two main things that I really think are important with the money are the house and, uh, you know, the clothes you can only get in shops. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of as well. The clothing is definitely, uh, the most important thing that you can buy with money. Uh, there's only... I can only think of one or two instances where necessary clothing is well maybe not necessary clothing but extremely helpful clothing is only uh, regulated to the shops uh, in a, you know in death mountain you can you can find a guy to give you uh, the the chest armor for the fireproof armor, whatever it's called. Flame breaker armor, I forget. <laughs> Obviously, I haven't been playing that game in a while. But, uh... You know, the cold armor? You can find it in the beginning of the game. The, the uh, the warm doublet. A really bad cold armor. Interestingly enough, you know, you just get side tangent about that game. You know, I, I'm so, I promise, in a minute I'll have more to say, but yeah, we're in the tower again. <laughs> remember when we were here? No. Three years ago? It was a long time ago. I don't remember. <laughs> Everything's changed since then. The Fire Nation has attacked. Yeah, but instead of fireballs, they uh, chose a deadly virus. Well, I wasn't going to say anything about the deadly virus. But, uh, yeah. That too. I mean, people, people. I mean, <laughs> people know, it's a thing, yeah. But you remember. But you know, this could be we this could to... be dating it. This timeless video I'm making. Yeah. Yeah, we're near the end of 2020 as we're recording this, and if you're listening to this, either I don't know, we survived. Well, not to mention we have COVID. What are the? Okay, no, no, not yeah. trick game. Okay. Yeah. I'll end the politics talk with. Uh, 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 all I'm gonna say is this. What are the chances this would happen during an election year? Uh, who knows? I mean, regardless of what you're thinking, I mean, we can all agree on that. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, a crappy situation. But that's why we're playing yeah, video but, games, yeah, to get away from the crappy situation. Yeah, yeah right now you're in a fucking typhoon. Yeah, and I want to get this uh, rupee over here. Because it's important yeah, how to me. How does this make sense? The wind okay, blowing. When you step on, <laughs> on the wood, shouldn't your weight be pushing that down? Oh, this is really strong wind. The kind of wind that'll blow a a bridge okay, across, I, I, but I, I not but not on. blow a. Uh, okay, if anyone comments, I'm just kind of curious. The people who knows more about this kind of thing, it, can you remotely do anything like that in real life? Or because I'm going towards now. I highly doubt it. 
I, I would say yeah. I, it's if, extremely doubtful. As if it was, if it was, I mean, if it was, you know, uh, certainly not to that extent. No. I mean, exactly. I, I, you know, enough. Okay, now we are. Uh, oh, we will talk about the game now. It's a really good cutscene. <laughs> Uh, this is a really good cutscene, and Midna's pregnant. With sparklies. Because that's the joke I made. Yeah, I've I got forget, a squeaky chair. Sorry you, about that. The, I can't. Yeah, I can't remember. When did? Was this the first time you used the sparklies joke? Oh yeah, like my right sparklies. here. Yeah, and yeah, I'm not sure where that Sparkly's know, joke I, I came do, from. <laughs> well, I, do, I just know by the end, it's like midnight, you know, when Zelda is rest, you know, she, like, she was inside her and went back in her body. It's like, my Sparkly's. Don't worry, Midna, one day you'll have to play Sparkly's. My Sparkly's. Okay, I remember, like, you made a joke about Sparkly's and for whether, you brought it back at the end. Yes, and I can't remember if this was before or after Adam West Lapdog made a joke about sparklies or sparkles <laughs> so I probably stole it but you know uh, I love how expressive his eyes is like even in wolf form you can still tell that's Link just by looking at his eyes oh yeah and I mean it doesn't hurt that he has green fur what? It's like grayish green. Wait, is this fur gray? Yeah, so I, said, I thought it was black. It's like the top of his head is more okay. uh, more green than like solid gray, but you can't really tell when he's in the twilight realm because the colors are all messed up. I like that angle. It's very like uh, I think they call it like a Dutch angle. You know, it's I'm all crazy like that. Yeah, you know, outside of that one cutscene where Zant invades, we don't see Zelda properly as Zelda. I mean, like you know, in the dress and whatnot, until the very end of the game. It's like unfortunately, I mean, that's this true. Zelda, it, it, she 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 just isn't much of a character in this game, unfortunately. No, you're uh, but still, this was this is, <laughs> but this is, well, is a very effective scene. Like uh, you know, I, I definitely got some chills first time watching this. Oh, and the music is just great. Yeah, but you're right about Zelda not really appearing in the game in, in the classic princess garb. But honestly, there are very few games that have Princess Zelda in them that much at all. Well, you know? yeah, but, uh, but also, like, more of the point, she's in a very thick, heavy cloak, and every, like, she, okay, so what's count? She appears once in the beginning, in the cloak, flashback without it, flashback again, then we fast forward to where we are now, and we won't see her again until the very, the very end, end of the game. Of the game. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a, that's a really good point, and uh, it is kind of, you know, funny. And I, I guess at this point, yeah. Ganon's well, in there. I what I... <laughs> like, all right, we're closed. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I can't remember at this point in the story. Is this even alluded to? Because I can't remember if it actually is. Like, it just happens when Zelda disappears. Well, well, actually, it kind of makes sense. Midna has Zelda's Triforce power, we can assume. Uh, and with her power of the Triforce out of the castle, the Triforce of power can now overwhelm the castle because it's no longer being protected well, well, yeah, we, by we, yeah, Obviously, we know this now. Like the first time playing, you don't know it's Ganondorf, because they don't even allude to him until you get to the Arbiter's Grounds. Correct. 
But we all knew it was Ganon. <laughs> we all figured. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I was genuinely surprised when I first heard, saw it or not. I really couldn't tell you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, some people have made the argument that, you know, it should have just been Zant, like Ganon was, like, shoehorned in. Um, I argue that in subtle ways he has a presence throughout the plot. I, I would have to agree with you. I can't think of any subtleties there where Zant or where Ganondorf is, like, throughout the plot, except for the fact that, you know, I think Zant alludes oh. to the fact that he's oh. serving a darker power. Yeah, I don't know, I, again, technically, yes, he's mostly at the end, but, uh, I don't know, the way they do it, I feel it works. But of course, there are people who still say, you know, he shouldn't have been in at all. It should have just been Zant. Like, he, if they think they believe it would have been more satisfying. It's like, I'm going to ask you this. If they had done that, like, no Ganon, Ganondorf at all, do you think it would have been a better story? Honestly, I don't. I think anyone who would uh, say that, you know, without or with uh, with Ganon, it makes it, you know, a weaker story. Ganon's kind of like the focal point of the story. Uh, he's the one that gave Zant the power. So... Okay. Uh, he's the one that gave Zant the, uh, the power to do the whole coup over Midna, but I guess they they could have written it in a way that removes Ganondorf's influence. But I think they were always they were always have the mindset that, you know, Ganondorf is the big baddie. He he has mm -hmm. part of the Triforce. They eventually right. make it I, so no, that not I mean of course and of course not always. Like every now and then you have a uh, Majora's Mask where there's just he, he's not part of the plot. Yeah, I mean Majora's Mask is is definitely an outlier. Uh, yeah, and even and games like Minish Cap where you have Vati, um, you know they say well Vati is evil that predates Ganondorf, and then you know. Four Swords Adventure, which takes place after Minish Cap, but also after Ocarina of Time. So, it's complicated. Even with the timeline that they made, they're still, they still changed it again, I, th I heard. Uh, I have not been keeping as up-to-date uh, as I'd well, like to. Uh, we all know that Breath of the Wild was a soft reboot. But they've made it clear that the original, like the games that preceded it, like, they're not wiped away, they still happened, but essentially, like, they set Breath of the Wild so far, far forward, that basically, essentially, it's, a, essentially, the timelines have kind of merged. And I can understand that reasoning, and I can understand how they just want to yeah, start with a new uh, slate. Yeah, like, they Please have slate. respect... That they had respect for what came before, you know. So that's why, it, you know, there's like other reboots. They just completely throw everything out. No, they didn't throw out the old games. Like they're still there. They still happened, you know. But uh, by the time Breath of the Wild comes out, the clock is just so far forward. Anything that's left is just a few fairy stories and such. Yeah, I mean, I, I I agree with what you're saying. You've got, you know, a society that does not really, you know, sure there are people with books, especially in in like this game. You know that there's, you know, live. Well, are there libraries? I'm trying to think. There's definitely bound books in this universe. Uh, 
Yeah. But the fact um, that there yeah, is yeah. <laughs> um the fact that there's such a huge distance of time between Breath of the Wild and even the events that are mentioned in Breath of the Wild, the uh, the Great War that you know the Divine Beasts were made of, were made for, happened like a thousand years or ten thousand years in the past of Breath of the Wild. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's a long and, and, time. And and now and now we we're gonna get that prequel that shows what happened, you knowing that hundred years before uh, you know Link is uh, put into stasis. Yeah, and I, I'm really... I'm looking forward to it, even though the gameplay is not... You know, I yeah, liked Hyrule I've Warriors. I've seen reception. Uh, well, first of all, apparently, as far as I can tell, they're treating this like Breath of the Wild's official prequel, so I'm going to say, unlike the first Hyrule Warriors, this one might actually be considered canon. Well, that'll be really cool, because uh, but actually, I, I the, like... The, the funny thing is... Uh, I saw in an interview with Al Numa, he specifically, like, he was thinking about, you know, the, war, like, you know, the Calamity Wars and whatnot mentioned in Breath of the Wild's backstory, you know, back in the days where, you know, Link and his fellow champions were together and they fought alongside each other, stuff that's alluded to in Breath of the Wild but not actually shown. Yeah, and it's really like he disappointing to himself that it's not that, shown. But you know, his thing, like then he thought to himself that the he remembered Hyrule Warriors, and he thought, you know, the Warriors gameplay would probably really fit this story. A story where there, it's supposed to be like war, you know, like big epic battles and stuff like that. Yeah. A friend of mine uh, uh, like, had a comment walk, about like, the uh, gameplay, and. The fact that uh, can I say one? Can I say one thing first? Sure. Sorry, I, I just want to say, uh, Breath of the Wild. I mean, some people have expressed disappointment that we're not going to see this story in a Breath of the Wild type game. But it's like Breath of the Wild is about exploration and discovery. That's not what this game or this story is about. Correct. Al Noom, I think, made a wise decision. He determined that story, the gameplay of Breath of the Wild wouldn't work for something like that. So he went to, you know, a development studio who they worked with in the past. You know, he's like, hey, like, how about, how, you know, you approach them to do, like, hey, how would, how would you like to do this prequel game in the style, you know, basically, let's do another Warriors game. But this one definitely feels different. This one... Well, I said they're really touting this as like, you know, this is the the Breath of the Wild prequel, not just yeah. not just another Warrior spinoff. Right, and I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be a good addition to uh, the series, even if it is like, even if it is a side story, uh, and if it's not considered canon, fine. If it is, that's good too. Uh, seeing the, seeing large scale battles is going to be fun. Uh, it's just sad to know that in the end, you won't be able to win. Ultimately. Yeah. I, I kind of wonder, this is the perfect opportunity to put in like a secret ending. Like, yeah, we know it's not canon, but you know, I kind of feel in stuff like this, why not have like fun, what if endings or scenarios it's for, for a story that you know like you know it's ultimate like what you do ultimately isn't going to matter because you again you know what happens when you know with breath of the wild like you, you know what's going to happen in the end i'm sure they're going to do something like that where there has to be like a happy ending because the end can't be you're dead your friends are dead Everyone you knew is dead. Yeah. Um. Well, what was that concern you said your friend had? Well, it's just the way that the way that the gameplay is in 
a Warriors, Dynasty Warrior type game where you'll have, you know, a big horde of enemies, but they're not active they're not always actively trying to attack you. They'll just stand by and wait until you get close enough, and they'll just you can stand by next to them and they won't attack because they're just not programmed the same way the enemies in Breath of the Wild are programmed. Yeah, and see, this whole thing, you know, the whole thing about Dynasty Warriors is scale and spectacle. And again, this is exactly why Al Numa wanted this, is because he, it's supposed to be this big, epic war with big, epic battles, and just you just can't do that in the style of, a, of Breath of the Wild. Absolutely. And, uh, and like, uh, I will enjoy the game okay, regardless you... of anything else. But uh, <laughs> we are talking about the game talk about... that is not out yet. <laughs> while playing uh, I know, game. but this is the perfect time. That sh this is this is the perfect time to like. So welcome to our Let's Play slash podcast. Well, that's basically uh, what all anyway. my Let's Plays are: <laughs> a podcast <laughs> while playing video yeah, games. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, but I do like to talk about the game at points, at least when I have something to say. This Fuck part this is going to mess me up. I, ha I hate this damn thing so... F <laughs> oh, God. Are you getting PTSD? Oh, God. This was something I couldn't even remotely do with... could not do without the strategy guide. You remember those kids? Yeah, they're still a thing, but they're not as prevalent as they used to be. Strategy guy kids? Or strategy guys <laughs> in general? You know, the strategy guys, I mean. Yeah. I mean, it's... It is annoying. To do, you know. Um, yeah, you know, Breath of the Wild had the right idea. I'd rather just get 13 hearts than do this fucking. I, I do like puzzles, but for some reason, this one. I don't understand, like. Because you can fuck yourself over really bad if you don't do it the right way from the start. Correct. But that's why they give you the option to uh, to go and uh, you know restart it if you speak to them. All in all, it's I I, I think I remembered it better this time than it, the last time I played the game. Yeah, it's like if this was a puzzle that could be solved multiple ways, fine. But no, there is only one way to solve this puzzle. Yeah, there really you is. You fuck up once. You, have, you know, I, I figured, I'm not against this kind of mechanic, but I feel like to have the puzzle be able to be solved with multiple solutions. But, okay, so easily, this might be my favorite getting the Master Sword moment. Yeah, this one's pretty rad. And, and, and coming back to, again, this was basically kind of a remake of, uh, Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Right down to you're, you're, you're in the Temple of Time right now, even. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, you know, I'm saying like you know, well, I say after Wind Waker, I mean they admitted they used Ocarina as the tem template for this game, much in the same way that they used A Link to the Past for it. Yeah. I mean, they always go back to what works uh because people get really critical when you deviate even when they deviated from you know the original to zelda 2 it's like hey it's different and it's not the same it's not what i was expecting like yeah but zelda 2 is still yeah. good it's hard it's much harder yeah. than any other zelda game in yeah. my opinion again again this is my favorite uh, you know, man. Also, this is when Minna really starts getting cute, because, yeah, she's still a sassy bitch, but she, 
like she's this is where like she warms up and she starts to get a bit more sunny. Yeah, definitely. She's more uh, more lively and more more energetic, I would say. And it's well, it's because you really see her in the light world, and she's not treating you like an animal because uh, you're not an animal anymore. Yeah. Again, like uh, I this is really I, I the first like, time uh, they've been able her. to interact. Mm. You know. Yeah, I'd say Mid. God damn, I like I love Midna's character and her arc. And again, again, this really is you know it's her story. Like Link is the protagonist, but it's her story. Yeah. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, named after Midna. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like, I can compare this to other games, like, say, Final Fantasy X. It's told from the perspective of, you know, Titus, and yet he's part of the story, but it's really Yuna's story that he's a part of. Right. And it, it's, it's kind of the same in, like, Tales of Symphonia, which has a similar plot and setup, uh, interestingly enough. But, um, like, Lord is the protagonist, and he's a, and he's part of the, he's a crucial part of the story. Like, and we're seeing it through his eyes, but it's really Colette's story. I mean, it's, it's an interesting storytelling technique where it's like, you know, your main character, like, again, like, they're not, they're not just an audience surrogate, like, they're, they're part of the plot, but they're still there for us to see through their eyes. Correct. Yeah, I was discussing with Gino, like, what makes a role-playing game a role-playing game? And really, it's kind of hard to describe because yeah. I feel like well, by definition, you you must assume a role in that in as broad as definition. I feel like you could be extremely broad with that. I could say this is role playing because you're assuming the role of Link. Yeah, yeah. I think it I really has like to be that what most people. I, let me just say this. I think. To be like a role-playing game, you have to actively make decisions that, like, could really affect the way the game turns out. And I don't, I think that might be too narrow a definition, because most games don't, like, yeah, their decisions well, honestly, don't really like, affect the game. Most people think role-playing games or, or RPG video games, they think of, like, the ones that are straight up, you know, based on Dungeons & Dragons, like, uh... Such as Baldur's Gate, Planescape Torment, like actual D and D licensed uh, video games. Yeah, I mean I... And that, that's what a lot of people think of initially. But of course, I feel like you could, uh, dep you know, depending on how you see it, you could expand it to uh, mean other things as well. Yeah, I guess it really, it really does depend on, uh, you know, your definitions. We can all say that all video games are escapist fantasy. Of course. I mean, they're, I feel like they're... With the, they're, they're all... They're, if they're either meant to immerse you in a world or just engage you in a way that makes you forget about... Uh, how uh -oh. you... I don't a know bad that, connection uh, issue, but uh, hopefully Matt's not done anything wrong. Oh dear! Uh, the connection is going out. Sorry for the interruption. As you were saying, Matt. Uh, yeah, you may or may not know it's a cut. We have oh, you'll notice the problem, cut. but now we have the <laughs> Yeah, and uh, we have uh, the postman here. Yep, thankfully he can never catch you as a wolf. Unless you walk up to him as one. 
these doors always kind of they always kind of weird me out because they're f they're facing the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah. And now we can actually do this mini game. Yes, with the tingle surrogate. Yeah, how many people before like before any before they said anything about that, how many people got that this was basically a tingle stand in? I mean it's funny. I I seem to remember a a magazine article it, it wasn't in Nintendo Power. I think it might have been in Game Informer. But they were talking about Twilight Princess. And they said the the guys who operate the Canon game and the Cuckoo game on Lake Hylia were like the equivalent to Tingle in this game. Just for like, as a weird character. And I mean, I guess they're right, because they are... They are the weird looking characters in that game. Yeah, but this one was straight up. Like, uh, they were redesigning, they were tinkering with, like, Zelda, classic Zelda designs in this new style. And, uh, rather, and rather than just making this tingle directly, they just basically used Tingle's design as a base for him. True. He's even got the clock that goes to the, uh, I guess it's, what, three o'clock? According to his timepiece. <laughs> He's got the pointy hat and the red pants. <laughs> yeah, so what you, this is basically sexy tingle and I'm not sure how I feel about it. I think I know how you feel about it. Hold on a second. You know how you feel about it. That was mild compared to the uh, spin-off game. Oh my god. I wish there was a way I could record my experience with that game, because I have played it. Uh, I had to buy it online. I was in Spain at, at a at a point in time where I thought I could buy it, but they weren't they didn't stock it for some strange reason. <laughs> but it is a it is a weird game. Can't play the sequel though, because it never got out of Japan. There might be a fan translation. Ah, the fans of Tingle, I, I shudder to think. Oh. If it isn't Link. <laughs> With her big booze I, I don't want to break immersion, but how about we, uh, we call it about when we get to the, uh, the desert. Yes, uh, we will call it then. It is getting, it is getting a bit late. But yeah. the, uh, like, I thought the first time talking to this guy, I didn't know if you kept talking to him, he would actually be like, oh, by the way, it's me, Russell, hi, how you doing? Yeah, I, because of shit like this, I will compulsively talk to NPCs in games, like, multiple times, because sometimes you think they only have the one thing to say. Yeah. It's like, oh, you don't know if you hit A again or something, they actually have a completely new text box. I uh, know, and it, it is the kind of stuff that really, really gets you annoyed. Uh, I have that, I have a similar problem with, um, well, now I have the opposite problem, where I'm trying to talk to NPCs that only say one thing. So you end up talking to someone twice, and, you know, they say the same thing, but then you accidentally hit them, hit it a third time, and it's like, okay, now I've wasted my time talking to this person. I just started playing Earthbound uh, Beginnings, which is the mother... Uh, the release of Mother in English on the Wii U, and I mean it's it's kind of crazy. Uh, well, you know, it's like it, they just got release Mother Three now, and they will finally have appeased the Earthbound fandom. Mm. 
I feel like even if they released it, it's still... <laughs> there's no appeasing people who have been, like, burned. It's like the Fire Emblem fans who've wanted, like, original translations. They'll be ha they're all ha I am happy. And I think a lot of people will be happy that uh, Fire Emblem 1 is being released in English. But then they'll say, well, I want it done for every other Fire Emblem game that didn't make it over here. Yeah. And again, I'm going to mention fan translation what whatnot. I was like, I, I personally encourage that shit. I mean, I love like, fan translations. I just wish it was I mean, easier like, to play. I love fan-created content. Like, everyone, the fans are the real heroes. <laughs> I mean, like, they do some of the most... I mean, like, for, like, most things. Not just Zelda or anything. Just, uh... You know what I mean? No... I agree with you. Just, just, when you. just so much passion and what. I, I, I honestly think some of the most impressive things I've ever seen have been fan works, both of it or not. Oh, I agree wholeheartedly. I think uh, what a fan can do and make something that's actually, like, really, really good, artistically good, and just unequivocally good, you know? It's impressive because it's a fan, but it's also just impressive. Because, you know, if someone makes a game and, you know, they make a game that is, you know, the sprites are, are ripped from something else, but it's still like an original game and it's like based off, well, not original, say a modded version of A Link to the Past. Like, that's impressive to me, because I don't know how to program a game, even if you have all the assets and the engine already built. Oh, yeah, like, fan games can be, uh, you know, amazing. Um, of course, more so than any fan thing, that they, they're the ones that get DMCA's more often than any, th any other thing. Yeah, and, and that's a shame. I wish, I wish these large companies would realize that if you allow the fans to be creative with, you know, the media and the copyright that they put out there, uh, the overall interest for it will be increased. Well, I've always said that if I was fortunate enough to have and have a property that was popular enough to really move people, I would be in complete support of fan creative works. And I would even I would even offer my assistance to anyone who would ask. Completely. Completely. I still am kicking myself. There was a uh, there was someone so so nice that when I made the first video for Phantom Hourglass Abridged, they offered to make, uh, like, cutscenes for me made out of, like, the paper craft kind of look that the, uh, the opening cutscene has, and unfortunately I didn't see it until, like, a year later, and the person was not active on YouTube at that point, and... I mean, the amount of time that someone spent on a video and then they got no response until that much longer later, it made me feel so bad. Well, I, yeah, I can imagine it, you know, some... It's just funny how time works. Oh, it is. It's it's amazing. All right. Now, to briefly get back in the game before we, uh... Oh, uh, we missed the ominous uh, foreshadowing. Well, the Twilly are there, or the Twily. I always say Twilly. I know they're people of Twilight, but I think Twily doesn't sound as good as Twilly. What do you think? You know, yeah, Twilly, I think it, sound, it sounds right to me. But mind you, I think it should be Fee and not Fi. I agree. But they've set their official release, and they've said it's Phi, but, and those, I've always wanted to fight, 
the shadow guys to the left and right of him with the mirrored face. I know they'd probably fight the same as the other ones, but it would be another enemy. And it's, it, it's, um, it's so infuriating that they put them in the cutscenes, but you can't fight them. <laughs> There's left one link between the light and darkness. That's you. You're the link. Oh, no, it's the mirror twilight. <laughs> Slap. I mean, I, I know that I've always said it. The chemistry between Link and Midna is so much stronger than the chemistry between Zelda and Link in this game. But there's still fan art of Link and Zelda making heart eyes at each other. But I think that's all for tonight. A little bit shorter, but Matt, let's promise the folks that we will continue this and not and not play in 2022 like this has been played in 2018. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, this we were kind of easing back in. My goal for next time is to not go on so many tangents. People do not get me talking about anything. <laughs> That's my point. Good night, everybody.